911, what's your emergency? When he called me and said, I need you to take me to emergency, I knew that it was a real emergency because he does not do that. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, it's food poisoning. He'll be fine. But when the nurses called and said they were keeping him and that he was going to have to have emergency surgery the next day, I, I almost lost my mind. I literally was so sad. Like I immediately started praying and asking God to cover him and protect him and, and, and rid him of any illness because I'm like, if Jay's gotta get surgery, it's gotta be something important. Cause he, he, he I've never even seen him take Robitussin. <laughs> never seen him take a cough drop in three years. Um, and because of COVID, you know, you can't have visitors. And I begged them and they allowed me to come see him for 10 minutes before his surgery. And we prayed together. Uh, and I just, and it, the, you know, the first thing you do, you're like, you think about what if I, what if something goes wrong? What if I have to live my life without this person? So how is this like, has this humbled you? Hell yeah. This is like super humbling. The fact that, you know, some days it's cool, you know, I just kind of breeze through the day, but I'm often reminded that I'm not pooping like everybody else. Like I'm really shitting in the bag. You know, it's parts of it is like, you know, I'm mature enough not to be embarrassed, but parts of it is kind of embarrassing. It's like, I'm the, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a guy with a, with a shit bag. I've never been that person. Um, but when I start to feel down about this, I also get pepped up because this shit bag saved my life. Without this, I'm dead. So it's like, I'm kind of proud of it. That's why I can do this so comfortably. It's like, all right, I got a med, you know, like I don't, I've been so healthy all my life and I've always empathized and compassion for people that may be handicapped or have a medical thing, you know, you know, issue going on, but it usually hasn't been me. So I'm having a, perspective of compassion and empathy from, from perspective of like I don't usually get sick I don't have I've never had surgeries I'm usually you know healthy but um to you know now kind of be where I'm not of you know 100% health and all that um it's different but um again this thing saved my life so this this incision is where they put me in under amnesia cut out a fifth of my colon took out my appendix then put my stomach through this hole, made a hole, and put my stomach through my through this hole so I can have bowels. This is gonna be reversed in a couple months. And they're gonna reverse it, reverse ostomy, and then I'll have I'll be regular again. When I got the call that um, he was having emergency surgery, I, I my mind went to like a parent whose son had been shot. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, and I really kind of felt like that, like he was shot, but he wasn't. And Jermaine never had surgery before, never been hospitalized. And so it, it was a really bitter pill to swallow. Um, I believe it was a test of all of our faith because, you know, just like that, no matter what good things he had going on or bad things, you know, he could have died. And our world, as we know it, would have been forever changed. It was very scary. It was very scary. And we, we you know, we, we were thinking the worst always. And we were like, we make sure our paperwork and, you know, this is in line, health insurance is in line, life insurance is in line, this is in line. Because we were, we were preparing for, for, for the worst possibly. Um, and that was a very, very hard time because it was at the height of all the drama, the social media drama, I'm pregnant, and now he has to have this emergency surgery where the doctor literally said, had you not have brought him in at the time you brought him in, he may not have made it. They did a CAT scan on me and they said, no, it's not food poisoning, but you have a perforated valve. I'm like, what the hell is that? They're like you have a hole in your stomach, a hole in your lower, or either upper or lower intestine and there's a disease called diverticulitis, which is a very popular disease. Um, but as they did further investigation on it, I happen to have like one of the top, like one to 3% worst versions of this disease. 
while so much is going on in the business world. And I had plans for counteracting many of these um, attacks, if you will, um, et cetera. Um, you know, medically I was put down and I believe that God put me down. I believe it was a time for me to be silent and it's time for me to be still. And if it were not for this uh, surgery and for that injury at that time, I wouldn't have been silent, I wouldn't have been still. Nothing was gonna keep me silent or still. The first time I met Jay was actually by way of a conference call. Uh, he and I, along with my wife and Ernestine, all united for the unique purpose of me to share with him uh, a teaching that had been placed in, in my heart for him. My initial thoughts was that his reputation had preceded him. Uh, the work that he had done and accomplished at this stage and by this age of his life was already impressive, but that there was something extra. The discovery that I shared with him had something to do with his calling, not only in the world of business, but in the world of ministry, in that likened unto one of the unspoken heroes of the Bible, Mordecai, who was the cousin of a famous woman by the name of Esther. In the Bible, this man was very wise. Uh, he was very giving and had a compassion for others to the degree that he would always find himself looking out for others. But he promoted the wealth of his people my thoughts were around my legacy. It was, if I go into this surgery on August 14th and I did not make it out of this surgery, what would the world say about me? What would they say, what would my daughters be told about Jay Morrison? Two months prior, I had no question of what my legacy would, would be and I felt that it was almost cemented. I felt like I put in enough physical, tangible work and service and sacrifice that my legacy in, this, in essence, a piece of it, the first start of it was cemented. But at that time, um, folks were uh, doing their best attempt to cause you know, so much doubt and, and to cloud my name and reputation and the work that we've done that um, I literally was thinking like, you know, what would be my legacy if I don't come out of this alive? While you're in that moment considering that, is there a part of you that is afraid to die? Hmm. My first instinctive answer is no. Um, I think there is a part of me that is afraid to die not hit, having lived a fulfilled life. What has been your favorite failure? Hmm. My favorite failure has been failing at the drug game. Had I've had more success in selling drugs, I would have kept going. I would have continued to push my run. And um, I believe that God like smacked me up just enough. I felt like um, I was getting these chances um, to be groomed, to get these life experiences but also to see like, I, I got more for you on the other side. As it pertains to Jay's story, his personal life story, high school dropout, three-time felon, having spent time in prison, and then the dramatic recovery and the resurgence of a man when he puts his heart and his mind, along with his faith, into his belief of what he can do. God masters in recovery stories. God loves comeback stories. And if anyone has ever appreciated a good movie that has a comeback to it, then Jay Morrison is that comeback story. He is the one who you will see after the dust settles, after all of the fire seemingly has burned everything down that can be burned down, he will be likened unto the spirit of the original Tulsa experience with Black Wall Street that resurged. I would say I want to see him, you know, achieve peace and a new level of selfishness. 
So there was like Selfish J, and then there's been what everyone, the Jay Morrison everyone knows now is like an overcompensation of how selfish he was in his earlier years. You're seeing like this selfless, extreme selflessness J, and I'm kind of sick of seeing it to be honest. I want to see him be selfish, but grown man selfish, which is different than when he was young and selfish, buying chains, buying cars, while your mom still might be in the hood, right? You um, it's different now. It's grown man selfish of where like, there's peace, there's your kids, your children, there's um, everything he's been preaching, really the last 10 years of his life that you all know, but hasn't been putting himself in a position to experience it because he's been working so hard for the people. It's always about the people, the people with Jay. And that's good, you know, I don't want him to stop that or end that vision, but I do want to see him achieve some sort of succession plan where he can one day relax. So if he continues to, you know, keep God first, family, take care of the people that work for him, and sky's the limit. There's, there's nothing that he can't do. And my biggest hope for him is to truly let go of any inhibitions that he may have, any childhood traumas that he may have, and walk fully into who has, God has called him to be. And although he has done amazing work thus far, I know for a fact that the floodgates have not even opened, have, haven't even scratched the surface yet for his life. And he is so truly ordained and just different and called. And I hope that he has the confidence and the gumption enough to say, you know what? No longer am I letting anything hold me back. And I just pray and, and, and ask God to let him unapologetically walk into who God is growing him into be. And that person, y'all are afraid of him now, that person everybody should be afraid of because that person possesses so much power and so much care and empathy and solutions. And I cannot wait to see what 40 births for Jay Morrison. Here's my big, big epiphany, is that approaching 40 and what I'm going through, what I, what I realized is I've always said in the streets that I was willing to go to prison for the streets and I was willing to die in the streets and I was willing to go to prison for however long to sacrifice for my family, right? Like I told you that, you know, I was cool with being a sacrificial lamb if I got my family up. Then as I evolved and got into community activism, I've always proudly said that I would die for our people. If God were to make a deal with me, like, yo, lose your life and I'll save all black people. I'll repair all black people if you lose your life. I would take it in a heartbeat. If I'm gonna complain or if I can't take reputation assassination or this old Jay Morrison dying off, for the evolution of me and the evolution of what I can do for our people or what, I, what God can do, excuse me, what the God can do through me for our people or whatever next level he wanna do in my life. It's like, if I, don't, if I can't accept that, I'm really bluffing. What God has been doing his last, all this time is killing off the old Jay Morrison. Who Jay Morrison became all these years was like, I was driven by being a guy. Like whether, no matter what turf I was on, I needed to be the man. And the same thing, a piece of that, although I've been in activism very selflessly, there still has been a piece of even activism where I say in our corner classes and everything else that if you want to be legendary, do some legendary shit. That's my own, there's a piece of self-servingness in that is saying that I want to be legendary. So that's about Jay Morrison, I ain't, that's not about the community. Like I'm doing work for the community, but at the end of the day, I. I want to, and I want to say even past tense, I wanted to be a legendary figure in our community. I want to make the history books. I always said that. I always want to make the history books. And that's a part of me that I got to kill and that God is really killing and that got to die is that I can't be all I'm supposed to be when I got any level of self-serving interest. No matter how many corner classes I do, no matter how authentically, passionately I serve our people or serve my family or do whatever I do, serve God. I can't serve God's purpose and be like, and do it 80% of the way. So for me, I always felt I wasn't being arrogant, I was being humble, and I was being selfless by doing and contributing all the things that I've risked and that I've done 
for the community, but that was at like a look in the mirror 10 feet away. And when you use God and you use Christ, when you use the, a perfect figure, a perfect example of love, when you use that as your perfect mirror and you get close to it, you see all your flaws. So in this process of doing this documentary, I got to see many of my flaws, one big one being in all the work I've done, I still have had this aspiration to at the end of the day be the man. Whether it was the man in real estate, the man in education, the man in the culture, the man in activism, whatever. And like, that's the part of me I realized um, is just approaching 40 and this process that God really bring me through because it's not me bringing myself to, to this conclusion. It's really like a mix of, you know, all of what has been going on in this process of God purging me, pruning me, refining me, and just speaking to me, et cetera, I just realized that in order for me to reach my next level, the old Jay Morrison gotta die. Mind you, God may have that for me still, to be legendary and be the God, but you, I have to let him decide that and me just do the work, not me do the work to achieve something that I personally aspire or have aspired to for 20 years And so I was literally daydreaming, looking down here, and I was like, well, what if I called the mortgage company back? What if I put my full energy into real estate? And I was asking myself, like, yo, Jay, are you a drug dealer or are you a hustler? And I was like, a drug dealer only can sell drugs. A hustler can hustle anything. And I made up my mind right here on this corner, right here, on this little curb right here. I made up my mind to lead the game forever. That's how I beat the trap.